August Belmont arrived in America, quickly established himself as the representative of a major banking family, was well-cultured, was a sportsman, a politician, and married very well. Their third child, Jane Pauline, experienced stomach issues, which eventually killed her at the age of 19, and the family built the chapel as a memorial to her. Now, into the 20th century, the chapel was in heavy use, but as it deteriorated, the use diminished. And by the time we got to the 21st century, it was unrecognizable. So we had all the vines were covering the chapel to the point where you couldn't even recognize it as a structure. So when I brought an arborist over to get a price for pruning the limbs and all the debris off of the chapel, they said it's very difficult to prune wisteria growth out of trees. They didn't even recognize it as a building. The chapel had five holes in the roof. You could look out and see the sky. As a result of decades of being open to the elements, water infiltrated the building. So there was a lot of damage due to that on the interior. The philosophy is you keep as much as you can that's there. And then you melded new things in if you had to. Like they found on the back of one of the roof tiles where they had been originally made. And they found that place up in upstate New York. So we got the same slate and the same thing with the mortar. So you just embellished and brought it back. So what's here is nothing really new. It's really restoration. The roof sheathing after investigation was uh, heart pine. And so is the, all the structural components, the, the rafters and the, and the beams. And we sourced those to a firm in Providence that harvested old timbers from previous structures of, about that vintage. And they had to mill them up to our specific sizes. On the second phase, you know, we, we focused on the interior. There was interior masonry restoration and the plaster had completely failed, so it had to be stripped and redone. It was important uh, historically to keep the windows and conserve them and bring them back to uh, the original intent of the artist and designer. It's just something that's there for generations to appreciate, uh, admire. In conservation, I always like to say that um, our goal is not to conserve the windows so that they look as good as new, but I always like to say that our goal is to make them as good as old. So you look at the windows, we know they're from 1893, the glass that we replaced, even I have a hard time picking which one was new and which one was original. So that's our goal and it's, uh, it's a great satisfaction. We started the project knowing that we had to raise two and a half million dollars. And it seemed like, oh my God, you know, how are we gonna do this? And it was amazing because we, the money started rolling in and we actually did raise a little more than two and a half million dollars, which I think is a wonderful success. I think the pride in the community has increased, and especially in this end of Newport, which is sometimes overlooked. This is the old North End, you know, and in, in, it's not the Bellevue area, but it is a critical part of Newport's history.